Next we're going to be doing some special tests to the shoulder. The first one is going to be for the ligamentous tests or the joint play. It's very similar to joint mobilization. First we're going to uh, look at the um, sterno, uh, sternoclavicular joint um, up here in front. And again we would just push the uh, slightly posteriorly. More laterally, pushing it again just for just a little bit of a joint play. Uh, might need to do um, superiorly. Or inferiorly. Then we can also do some joint play up here at the coromioclavicular joint. Um, again, if you would take the uh, lateral, or, lateral or distal clavicle, I'm just going to uh, move it on the acromion process. Again, we can go posterior a little bit. We can do anterior movement. We can do inferior, pushing downwards. superior might be a little bit harder pulling it upwards again just kind of depends on their amount of pain and then we can also do um, clenohumeral joint uh, again just moving it uh, posteriorly backwards we can do it um, anteriorly Pushing it, holding it. Uh, we can do it superiorly, pushing it upwards, or inferiorly. Different joint place, pushing it down. So we're going to be doing special tests for the acromioclavicular joint or the coroclavicular joint. Um, the first one that we're going to be doing is uh, just a piano key sign. And for this one, we're basically, if we have an elevated clavicle over here at the acromioclavicular joint, we can just um, push down like a piano key on the distal or lateral part of that. Uh, if it's moving, that would be a positive test for uh, um, AC uh, sprain. Um, we also have a uh, traction test for the AC joint. I'm going to have the patient uh, flex their elbow at 90 degrees and I'm going to grasp their uh, distal humerus and I'm going to um, pull uh, inferiorly uh, applying a traction or a distraction test and I'm wa wa at the same time I'm watching the AC joint to see if that causes any pain or deformities or this, this um, uh, at that joint. The next one that we're going to be doing is the um, AC compression joint. And for this one, I'm just going to put, place my hands both anteriorly and posterior at the um, deltoids, uh, compressing my two hands together, kind of pushing the AC joint together. And again, that would cause uh, pain or discom discomfort or uh, maybe displacement at that joint, um, indicating a positive test for the. Uh, acromioclavicular ligament. So we're going to be doing special tests for the glenohumeral joint. First we're going to be assessing uh, for uh, anterior glenohumeral dislocations. Uh, for this one what we're going to do um, is we're going to abduct the patient's arm to about 90 degrees. We also have her at 90 degrees of elbow flexion. Uh, so she's at 90-90 and then we're going to passively uh, externally rotate the arm at that position and if she had an anterior dislocation she would be apprehensive, she would not let me go past that point um, or we may also see it, um, a deformity in the, for uh, anterior dislocation. Um, we also have a relocation test so same thing if we were to come up to uh, 90, 90, externally rotator um, 
And then when she starts to get apprehensive or dislocates, what we can, we can do is push uh, posteriorly on the, the head of the humerus, and then we should be able to relocate um, that uh, glenohumeral head, okay? Or it should be uh, more comfortable for her in this position when we externally rotate. Um, we also have one for um, posterior apprehension. And for this one, we want to make sure that we have some type of a padding underneath the shoulder or we might want to move her to the, to the edge of the table. And for this one, what we're going to do is we're going to have her, again, uh, flex at 90 degrees. And then uh, she, she'll flex at the elbow as well. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing, we're going to be um, pushing posteriorly uh, to see if that causes any apprehension um, uh, or we see it um, off, the, off the table. Another one that we have is um, for posterior uh, glenohumeral uh, dislocations. Uh, we have a test that's in the plane of the scapula. So for this one, we're going to come up again at 90, 90 degrees. And then we're going to uh, horizontally adduct the shoulder, the humerus, into the plane of the scapula. Uh, so it should be a line right there. And then for this one, we're going to take the um, proximal humerus and we're going to push that um, posteriorly to see if it uh, dislocates posteriorly. So she might be apprehensive for, for that one. So that's the test in the post for posterior dislocations in the scapular spine, plane of the scapula. And then the next one, the last one that we're gonna do, I'm gonna have her um, sit on the table. And this is called a sulcus test, and this is for uh, inferior uh, glenohumeral dislocations. And for this one, I'm going to have her arm uh, totally uh, extended on the side of her body. Uh, and what I'm going to do, I can either grab here at the elbow or at the wrist, and I'm going to apply a distraction. I'm going to watch the, the head of the humerus to see if it um, moves down inferior to the glenohumeral joint, indicating a positive sign for inferior dislocation or glenohumeral uh, dislocation. We're going to be doing some special tests for, for uh, rotator cuff muscles. First one that we're going to do is called the empty can test. For this one, we can either have them sit or stand with their arm at their side. Uh, we're going to have them abduct 90 degrees. And then we're going to ha have her horizontally ab adduct ADD 30 degrees so that she's in the plane of the scapula. And then I'm going to have her internally rotate um, her shoulder. Okay, not pronate, but internally rotate the, the uh, glenohumeral joint so that the thumb is down like she is emptying a can um, or a bottle. And then I'm going to push down on this, um, and if she can't hold it in that position, then that would be a, a positive sign for the supraspinatus uh, muscle, one of your rotator cuffs. Next, we're going to do a drop arm test, and for this one, she is going to um, actively uh, abduct her shoulder to uh, one, about 180 degrees and then she's going to slowly lower it and if she has an injury um, to her supraspinatus right at about 90 degrees it, it would uh, the drop um, and the next test is called the near impingement test for this one she's going to be in anatomical position I'm going to uh, internally rotate the humerus so that the palm is facing laterally. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, have her relax and I'm going to passively go up to uh, shoulder flexion. And that should cause some pain into her supraspinatus uh, muscle as a positive sign when I passively flex it. The next test is going to be the Hawkins-Kennedy test, and this is awful. also for the supraspinatus muscle. Uh, for this one, she's going to abduct the shoulder to about 90 degrees, and then she's going to flex that elbow and uh, 
horizontally adduct and then once she's in that position I'm going to um, passively uh, internally rotate her uh, glenohumeral joint uh, so I'm pushing down and this would also uh, cause pain to the supraspinatus. And then the last one is the Gerber liftoff test and for this what she's going to be doing is she's going to be taking the injured hand and she's going to be putting it into the small of her back uh, again with the palm facing towards me and there's a couple different methods that you can use for this we she can either lift it off herself or you can add resistance to that and that again would cause some pain a discomfort to the uh, supraspinatus muscle and that's it for the rotator cuff